okay, can we just get wherever, wherever you guys are not on the select board, if you're on channel for the special edition of the election, can you just put it by, like, right now? Test, test. Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Daryl Pillsbury along with my cameraman, Joe. Joe, say hi. Hi, Joe. There we are. As you can see, we are indoors because we are fair-weathered TV guys. <laughs> uh, we're here to bring you the Pulse of Brattleboro election special. We are in the BUHS gymnasium, and we are going to be waiting for the results, which we will bring to you in a little bit. But stay tuned, and we'll have all the results for you in a little bit and some interviews with some of the candidates and winners. Thank you. All right, you ready? See, aren't we buddies? <laughs> Even after our fight out there. Well, I took it out on the wrong person. <laughs> okay, here we go. You ready, Joe? So we're here uh, in the BUHS gymnasium, and I am here with Senator Jeanette White, who is on her sixth term now. Is that right? Ten years you've been serving, right? If I get reelected, it will be six terms. Well, I'm just going under that assumption for everybody right now. But we will but have the results be, pretty yes, soon, yes. and we're going to give them to everybody. So. Okay. But, yes, six, six terms. Okay. So... Uh, well, we'd like to welcome all the viewers out there. We are live right now at the BCTV studios coming right here to, uh, from uh, the BUHS gymnasium. Jeez, I'm crow. That was live. I got a little panicky yeah, there. Yeah. But I know who I'm standing with right now anyway, thank goodness. And I am with I, can what to say. I am with Senator Jeanette White here live at the BUHS gymnasium. The polls are closed, and here we go. Well, after being outside for out a while, there. it was it cold. It was cold out there. Um, so, like we were just saying earlier that nobody probably got to hear, uh, this is your sixth term if you are if elected. If I am reelected, it will be my sixth term. And what do you plan on doing when you get back there? Now that you have a lot under your belt, you uh, will be able to probably go back and be chair, hopefully, of the Gov Ops. I hope. I hope. I love that. Committee. I know you do. I love it. And then what are your what what would be your first thing on your like what's one of the things you want to accomplish? Okay. Well we're gonna take on vital statistics this year because we didn't do it last year. The the vital records, um, birth certificates, we're gonna do campaign finance. Your favorite topic. <laughs> I'll ask you about it. <laughs> we're going to do um, we're gonna re we're gonna look at all of the elections issues because what happens is that we pass you know, two changes to the election laws, and then the next year we pass two more, and it drives the town forks crazy. Because so this year, what I want to do is look at all of them, all of the election laws as a whole, and see if they make sense with each other, and see where changes need to be made. So we're going to do that. Um, public records. We're looking at the exemptions to public records. I'm going to do my free student free speech again, which right. I've done before, but this year I have kids at almost all of the high schools in Vermont who are helping me with it and their teachers. That's cool. Yeah, because I went up to the Governor's Institute over the summer and talked to them about issues and they got really excited and so we've been exchanging emails back and forth. Well, then yeah. you're going to be pretty busy. Um, now, let's just assume that you did win. Okay. Uh, tell everybody, you know, hey, thanks for your vote. Hey, thank you for your vote. <laughs> yes, and even if I didn't win, thank you for those who voted for That's me. Right. And for all the sport over the last 10, ten years. years. Yes, it's been great. It goes by and fast, though. It does go by fast. And people are so, so, um, this is the best constituency in Vermont because people are willing to share their ideas with you and willing to be um, understanding. Argument, but right, yet. but then be understanding when things don't go exactly the way they want yep. it to. So, yeah, yep. best well, constituency I'm going to agree with you right now for that one, but yep. after that, I'm on my way. Damn it. <laughs> I know, I know. All right, and thanks enough a lot, Senator. Again. Thank you, Senator. Okay. Molly, I'm going to save the rookie for, although she's no longer a rookie. Uh, oh, that's right. Rookie. We're going to go we right down. And now we have from District 2, our Representative Molly Burke. and Molly. still all bundled up because it was well, cold out there. I'm just relishing. It's cold. I mean, yeah. it's still it's yeah. holding into yeah. the cold weather. Um, so listen, this is, what, is this your, you've been here six years now, right? Isn't well, I've been there four. You've been there four years. This is my third this is election. Third. Wow. Boy, it does go by. As the time goes by, yeah. 
Um, so your transportation committee, are you hoping to get back on that again? Absolutely, yeah. yes. And um, you've done an awful lot of good work. Well, I really uh, feel like we have an opportunity in the state to think about how we do our transportation. We have got to diversify our transportation system. We have got to cut our, our greenhouse gas emissions. We've had a love affair with our automobiles. We've got to think about how we can else we can get our get ourselves around. There are ways people cities in Europe have figured it out. We live in a rural state, you know, distributed settlement patterns, but we have to improve our public transit system and other, you know, car sharing, other ways to get around. We just can't we can't all be driving our own individual cars no, everywhere. Yeah, even though I know we like the And stuff. and I'm you know, I it's something, you know, I value too. Even though we value our independence and going where we want to go when we when we do. But anyway, I just think that we need to have an affordable transportation system too. There are a lot of people who cannot afford to to own vehicles and elderly people who cannot drive and so one of my strong interests is in making it possible for everybody to have access to a good transportation system. Well, very good, and thank you for serving the people of Vermont. Thank you for serving Brattleboro. And this is your District 2 rep, and what else would you like to say? Uh, just, I'm very honored to uh, be serving the people of Vermont, and I'm honored to be following you, Daryl. Well, thank you. You say that every your, time you can stop. No, 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 it's, it's true. No, it's true. It's true. And, and uh, you know, you, you have a... I miss Still, you. A, a great connection to the community, and that's very important. Well, thank you, okay. and uh, we look forward to another two years. Okay. So, Hi. Representative Valerie Stewart, Hi. District One. one. Right. Okay. Exactly. And now you are no longer a freshman. Uh, now. Okay, because exactly. now you're on your second. Absolutely. Round. And, and have, now you were education committee. Uh, yes, I. Are you going to try to do that one again? Yes, I am. And what would you like to accomplish this time? Now that you know a little bit of what's going on, it's yeah. going to make it a lot different when you walk in there this time. Around. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I think I think it will definitely. I understand the process and that sort of thing. And um, I think one of the most important things I'd like to help make headway on is narrowing the achievement gap. And as you know, that is the gap between children who are lower income and children who have parents with sufficient economic means. So um, we ha have different strategies. One of the things we passed in the last biennium was um, a principal mentoring bill because we found that schools with strong principals make children from low income families feel more comfortable and help them succeed at the end of the day. So I think we have to implement more strategies like that to really help low-income children do better. And that helps us all do better because it's a real loss of human capital and um, it is an economic drain on the state of Vermont when we have people who aren't employable and don't finish high school because they haven't had the schooling that they needed at the you know, beginning of their lives. So um, that's one of the things I'd really like to, um, and then anything we can do at the beginning of the equation, you know, preschool, get more kids in pre-K and um, have them reading well by uh, third grade, which is essential um, in order for children to succeed later in their schooling. And um, secondly, at the end of the process, to make sure that kids are not just graduating from high school, but going to college and completing college. Yeah, and you know, whether it's a two-year degree or a four-year degree, but give them the skills to be marketable in the future, have a happy, successful life. So those are some of the things that I'd like to continue to work on. And um, I really appreciate um, voters' confidence in me, and I appreciate everybody who voted for me, and um, that sort of thing. And I really look forward to serving again, and I hope voters will contact me with their concerns at bstewart at ledge.state.vt.us. I'm sure you remember those yeah. all. Oh, yeah, there's a whole lot. <laughs> I all have to. Um, if once you get on the site, just be Stuart, and then you're, you're there. Yeah, right? that's you true. Can get, you can get a hold of all of them. Yeah, there. that's true. That's right. where you, you go. go. And, there and you she go. is Brattleboro's District 1 state representative. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank Valerie. you very much, Gerald. Good to see you. Senator. I know you've got a long drive, so I want to get you as soon as I can. Now, you also, when you, did you just get any information that's updated outside by chance? Well, I did. You can say over the, because it sounded absolutely. like it was a cheerful thing. Well, I've got some really important news. Uh, 
the networks have projected, Daryl, that Barack Obama has carried Vermont. Beautiful. There we go. Good job. Yay. That we, and we were the first state you probably called. This is the first state that was called for Barack Obama. Uh, so far, Indiana and Kentucky have been called for uh, Romney. None of those are, none of these three are surprised. But actually, Daryl, I have some I exit have to go past 12. I have some exit poll numbers. Oh, good. Let's have that. Uh, and let I knew me. you were doing some. By the way, this is uh, uh, Wyndham County's second senator or other senator. Uh, this is Peter Galbraith, uh, and we're very proud to have him serving as our senator. Uh, so, yeah, well, Daryl, uh, now, uh, you know, all these numbers have to be taken with a, uh, yeah. a grain of salt. Uh, but uh, the results are uh, Virginia, a tie. North Carolina, Romney up one. Florida, Romney up uh, one. Someone in Welch already predicted. Obama is up four in Ohio. Uh, New, New, good. We need that. New Hampshire, Obama's up three. Good. Pennsylvania, Obama's up four. Beautiful. Uh, Colorado tied. Minnesota and Wisconsin, up, uh, Rom, uh, Obama's up four in both of those states. Three in Iowa and five in Nevada. Now, if that is, the, if all those numbers turn out to be Correct, and those are as of five o'clock, Daryl. So the polls weren't closed. Uh, then Obama will be reelected. Well, I hope so. I'll well, be watching I'll for a long time tonight to get the official results. Obviously, but that's what we, we're we we all hope that yep. that's the case. Well, not all of us. Most of I our mean, viewers probably are. But well, right. <laughs> if they're watching BCTV, most of them probably are. <laughs> well, you know, I I had. Um, uh, a group of students from the Experiment oh, International right, Living right, that came over. Yeah, they, they were uh, uh, from uh, Cambodia, two young women there, Tibet, uh, uh, Sudan, uh, Mongolia, uh, uh, Ethiopia, and a young man from, um, from India. And I was sort of explaining about the American electoral system, uh, which is not, not the easiest to understand, but I did explain that they'd come to Brattleboro, which had the most intelligent voters in the United States. And the shortest lines. Well, look, you know. Oh boy, what's going on in Florida is unbelievable. Well, let, let, let's be clear about what's happened here, Dal, because this is a national scandal. Uh, and and I, was, I was talking to uh, a friend in Norway who was making the point, uh, said, uh, you know, how can you say you're the greatest democracy in the world when this happens? Now, what, what happened in Florida? Well, well, I'll tell you what happened, which is that uh, there, there was early voting uh, uh, for 14 days allowed. The governor and the legislature reduced it to eight days, and the result is uh, uh, hours long lines. Now, what was the reason for reducing it? Only one reason, which was to suppress, to reduce voter turnout, because frankly, they picked and choose where they did it. Of course. Okay, it's not like they picked the whole state and said all of it. That's the other thing. It, it's, it's, it's. I can't believe it. Now, I let, let me just say, in Ohio, did just, you hear about the Ohio with the with one of the voting? Did you hear that story out there? No. Where they said that when the guy was trying to vote in Ohio, he kept he kept wondering why when he was pushing Obama, Romney was clicking. Well, and they took the machine out. It, look, there, there can be mechanical malfunctions, and, and that, frankly, is why I think paper is a better, a little more time consuming, but better than uh, machines. And as long as I'm in the Senate, I'm going to oppose you know, machine voting uh, uh, in Vermont. But, uh, the, um, uh, but, but, uh, let, but that, that's one thing. The problem in Ohio is, is actually a little, is something different, which is that in the inner city, the Democratic areas, uh, there are, let's say, one machine for every 400 voters. And in the suburbs, which are more Republican, there's one machine for every 50 voters. So there are short lines in the suburbs, long lines in the inner city, and that tends to repress turnout. You know, for one individual voter, it may make perfect sense not to wait uh, two hours to vote, because one vote is not going to matter. But when, but it, when, but when it's when the, when everybody's vote matters, and that's why it's important that everybody get a chance to vote, and and that's really the dilemma that we we face, and and I think this is a serious issue. Uh, it doesn't appear that it's going to make the difference tonight, um, but but you know our, you know the, the the strength of our democracy depends on people's faith in our institutions and our systems, and when they continue to malfunction, 
it, it erodes the strength of our democracy. I think there are a lot of people who never got over the 2000 election, certainly never got over the damage that it did to the Supreme Court. I mean, there are plenty of, plenty of people who say, myself included, frankly, we don't have an independent judiciary in this country because no serious person can believe that that Supreme Court would have made the same decision in Bush v. Gore had it been Gore v. Bush, that is, Gore had been slightly ahead. No, they would have insisted on a full recap. Well, I think Bush played his cards right during that whole thing, just declaring himself the winner as he kept going through, and the other guy was, you know. Well, look, look, look they're, they're, ta they're tactical mistakes, but, but let's be clear. It wasn't Mr. Gore who was cheating. It was the American people. I mean, you know, it, whether, they, whether Gore had a wise legal strategy or a wise political strategy, uh, that's, that's an interesting point, may have played out in the result, but it's irrelevant to the issue that was at stake. The issue at stake was, did the American people get the president who was actually chosen by the American people, obviously not under the popular vote, but probably, quite possibly not even under the electoral vote. Which, I, well, this is a live group, and I got to get to other uh, candidates, but I want to talk to you about the electoral vote one time, because I, 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 I are you for that still? Absolutely not. Oh, good, okay. I, I'm, the, I'm for the popular I thought you, vote, oh, and, good. And, 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 and the Senate, I uh, supported a measure that came out of our committee for the, the, for the national popular vote, okay, meaning great. that that elect, you know, if a majority of states, uh, with the states with a majority of the electoral votes, enter into a pact and agree that regardless of how their state votes, they will cast all their electoral votes to the winner of the popular vote, then, then we could we can change the system without a constitutional amendment, which is, as a practical matter, uh, impossible to achieve because of the complexity of the, of the system. No, no, this 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 is a this is an 18th century idea that has long outlived its usefulness. Uh, and it doesn't, it's not good for our country or for the or for our standing in the world when the guy who loses the, the popular vote, in fact, becomes president. I agree. Well, thank you. Hey, and, uh, give us your exit polling numbers again. We went down the live again. Give okay, us give us the exit polls. Uh, we have, oh, did you, can you pull them I, back I, up? I need to put on my glasses. Uh, okay. You want to... Uh, we'll, we're going we're gonna to try and pull up some new uh, latest exit polls for all of our viewers here. Um, we had the latest, I can tell you this, Ohio was in favor of uh, Obama, <laughs> which was good. Uh, Virginia, I think we said was tied. I don't know. He, oh, he's got them. Here they are. Here, here we are, uh, Daryl. And uh, again, these are exit polls as of 5 p.m. So, um, you know, they, they obviously the situation could change. But Virginia was tied. Romney was had by a single point in North Carolina, which is good news for Obama because that state was expected to go for Romney. Ohio up four, very good news. Florida, Romney's up one. New Hampshire, Obama's up three. Pennsylvania, Obama up four. Colorado tied. Minnesota, Obama up four. Wisconsin, Obama up four. Iowa, Obama up three. Nevada, Obama up five. Uh, so if those states actually hold according to those exit polls, then Obama will be the next president of the United States. Incidentally, on the Senate, the Senate elections, uh, uh, Donnelly, the Democrat and very Republican Indiana, is up one. His opponent, uh, uh, Murdoch, the state treasurer, is the one who said uh, that if you're a woman becomes pregnant as a result of a rape, it's God's will. Uh, Kane, the, the Democratic governor of Virginia, is up. Okay. And I'm going to give them to you straight down the list, just the way the um, ballot was. So for President Vice right, here is our, President uh, Anderson Rodriguez, right. the total was 26. Johnson Gray, 46. Lindsey or, or, uh, Osorio, 22. Obama Biden, 4621. Romney Ryan, 915. Peter Diamondstone, okay, we're into Senator. Peter Diamondstone, 173. Chris Erickson, um, 105. Laurel Lafambroise, 11. John McGovern, 692. Peter Moss, 54. Bernie Sanders, 4554. For representative, we have James DeRosier, 112. Mark Donka, 688. Andre Lafambroise, 12. Jane Newton, 137. Peter Welch, 4533. Governor, Randy Brock, 965. 
Dave Eagle, 104, Chris Erickson, 117, Emily Payton, 157, Peter Shumlin, 4238. Lieutenant Governor Cassandra Geekus, 3569, Ben Mitchell, 308, Phil Scott, 1396, and State Treasurer uh, Jessica Diamondstone, 505, Beth Pierce, 3394, Don Schramm, 271, Wendy Wilton, 1098, <clears throat> and Secretary of State Jim Condos, 3795, Mary Alice uh, Hebert, 1125, Auditor Doug Hoffer, 3106, Vince Aluzzi, 1379, Jerry Levy, 670, Attorney General Rosemary Jackowitz, 242, uh, Jack McMullen, 925, William Sorrell, 3809, Ed Stanick, 307, State Senator Aaron Diamondstone, 600, Peter Galbraith, 3458, Jeanette White, 3990, Valerie Stewart, 16, um, okay, we're in State Reps, District 1, Valerie Stewart, 1692, Molly Burke, 5160, uh, no, 1561, Ian Diamondstone, 171, um, and Tristan Tolino, 1390. High Bailiff, Bob um, Backus, 4575. Do you want all the Justice of the Peace, too? Okay, so that's what we've got. I have sheets if anybody wants copies of them. Do you want to hand a few of them out? There you go, Tim. Do you want to hand a few of them out? I'm getting, I'm getting some sheets here as well. Okay, so we also had a 65% voter turnout, which was approximately 5,650 voters. Uh, they are calling uh, Shumlin the winner for the state of Vermont and governor and Welch the winner for um, state rep. And we are going to do an uh, interview here with Tristan Tolino here in a minute, as he will be the new state representative for um, District Brattleboro's District 3. So we'll wait for a second there. So anyway, if you went out and vote, folks, thank you very much for doing that. Uh, in this country, it isn't that hard to do, and I'm certainly glad that those of you who decided to do it did it. Uh, like the bumper sticker says, your voice is your vote. So use that vote. Speak your mind. And Tristan, when you got a second, please. Um, oh, here we go. We got Tristan. Tristan, congratulations. Thank you very much. It is now official. Yeah. You are Brattleboro's newest state representative, representing District 3. So what do you think? Well, I'm thrilled, obviously. It's been uh, quite a process, as you know. Uh, it's sort of a grinder, uh, really intense, and highs and lows and everything, but I'm, I'm really so happy and looking forward to the next steps. Well, how do people get a hold of you? Anybody watching, this is your uh, new state rep for District 3, which doesn't mean you can't get a hold of them if you live in District 1 or 2, but how, how will they get a hold of you, Tristan? Well, uh, I, you can go to my website, tristantolino.com, uh, that has uh, my email contact information, my cell phone. If uh, people want to know it now, it's uh, ttolino at gmail.com for my uh, email address and 802-579-5511 for myself. Excellent, excellent. Now, what committees, uh, they're going to have you pick three committees. What three committees do you think you're going to pick? Well, I'm, I'm going to ask to be involved in economic development as a first priority. I think that that's the major issue that we face in this community going forward is uh, how we grow at the same rate as the rest of the state and why we're not growing and what the uh, obstacles are and what we can do at the state level to make that better. Uh, so that's my first priority. I hope that that comes through for me. Uh, if it doesn't, um, I'm interested in health care, energy, and ag food issues, uh, so I've got some alternatives. And we'll see what happens. Wish it was in my control, but uh, we'll see what happens. Yep. Well, very good, Christian. And again, congratulations Thank and good so luck up there, man. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, now, from the BUHS Gymnasium, this is Daryl Pillsbury, along with my cameraman, Joe Bushy. Thanks a lot, Joe, for making this happen. And we are going to go back to the studio to roll in. Now, listen, folks, stay tuned because we'll be going live, 730. You're going to be getting state and national results from our, uh, the Burlington, uh, Channel 17 up out of Burlington. So stay tuned, keep it right here. You can get more results of what's going on in Brattleboro, uh, in the state and national. So to you, Roland, thank you. Thank you, everybody who came out and voted.
right. Hopefully we're not still alive. <laughs> okay, well, we hope you like this edition of the Pulse Brad overall. A little election special for you. Um, as you can see, uh, the place is emptying out now. We did have a pretty good result. I wish we would have topped over the 70% mark, but I guess 65% we'll have to do. Um, nah, two out of three isn't bad, as Joe says. Uh, so anyway, um, again, for my cameraman, Joe, this is Daryl Pillsbury from the BUHS Gymnasium. We'll see you next time, right here on the Pulse of Browderville.